Excited for our, our team, uh, extra day of prep this week. Um, even with the holiday, um, we're off and rolling here. Um, the best part about uh, this week is being back home at US Bank Stadium. It's been a great environment for us. Uh, I know it will be for a division game against a team that's playing really well right now, coming off of one of their best performances of the year. Um, we're going to have to play really well uh, to get our seventh win. Uh, want to, before I turn it over to you guys, just want to wish, won't get a chance to talk to you guys tomorrow. Just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and hopefully you enjoy um, some well deserved time uh, with your families and uh, very much thankful for you guys as well. Yeah, I think um, uh, Alex has been incredibly consistent in his role kind of in every phase of our offense. Um, I think there's been some things that uh, he's kind of made come to life even in this last game where maybe it wasn't blocked, you know, as clean as we had hoped or we got a unscouted look or whatever it was. And, and Alex found a way to churn out some yards and stay efficient. Um, I like how physical he runs. Um, I think he you know, does a really nice job. In the protection phase, I think he does a nice job catching the ball out of the backfield when we can give him a chance and turn those into opportunities. Um, you know, as far as the criticism goes, it's not something that uh, you know we were really concerned with. The one thing I'd say is, you know, one thing I've talked to Alex about is just the ball security and just how important that is uh, for him to continue to be able to churn out yards and, and get opportunities. And, and for us as an offense, we can't put the ball on the ground. And uh, Alex knows that. Um, I like, you know, kind of the mix we have right now. Ty's getting a few more carries to kind of, you know, provide maybe a little bit more uh, burst and athleticism, but they complement each other well um, with, with, with how we're using them. And we'll continue to figure out what that balance looks like. Um, but I, I feel good in, in a year where we've needed a little bit of depth at that position. Um, you know, I, I feel good about where those two guys are at. And then I don't think enough gets said about C.J. Ham's role within our offense, not only on early downs, uh, but on third down as well, coming in as a major, major uh, pass protector and some, some really uh, make it right principles to help picking up pressures or even some leakage here or there. I think our O-line deserves, rightly so, the, the type of praise they've received this year. Chris Cooper and, and Justin have done a great job with that group, but C.J. Ham being a part of that third down protection, I think, um, you know, can't be understated. Yep. Yeah, I think we're, you know, uh, he took, uh, you know, major part in our, our walkthrough earlier today. We'll, we'll get back out here in a little bit, get a little work tomorrow morning before giving these guys the rest of the day to, to spend with their families. Um, I think we're just going to assess it. And, and we've been doing that um, throughout the last couple of weeks, but he is getting closer. Uh, he is feeling really, really good um, when uh, that translates to him having a full performance, uh, you know, we'll rely on the medical team. Justin's got to make sure he communicates with the doctors and Tyler and Uriah how he's feeling, and then we can schematically kind of go from there. But, you know, and, and until we kind of feel like he's at that place, uh, which could come tomorrow, it could come, you know, just in time for Monday night, or, or maybe if it gets down to it, it is post by. Um, I think we're just going to continue to be smart. We have urgency to win this football game. It's a very important football game. We know that anytime you get a division opportunity at home, um, we're just not going to allow that to, uh, you know, distract us from the fact that we started out with some some really strong principles of making sure Justin was at a good place and 100% healthy when he would return. We want to give him every opportunity to do that, but we're not going to allow any other outside circumstances or even the circumstances of our team to drive that decision in any way, shape, or form. Does the preparation change or the focus change at all coming off the block rather than the punishment phase? If it ever does, then then I'm not doing my job. I think that would that would be a, a severe worry of mine that if we have to change our preparation, look, we uh, you know needed to do more in the game on Sunday night uh, to win that football game on the road in a really tough environment, and uh, we just didn't do that. Uh, there were some bright spots from our team, but not enough to win on the road in the NFL. Um, and, and you got to credit our opponent for, for how they finished that game. But also, 
um, we look inward and we try to figure out, you know, those exact things and those things we can correct and make those part of our preparation this week. Uh, our team's been preparing really, really well. Uh, they understand kind of week in and week out kind of the, the urgency we've had to kind of, you know, move guys up, elevate guys, get guys reps that maybe aren't comfortable or haven't gotten the amount of reps some of the injured players maybe have. That's at the quarterback position, receiver, D-line, outside backer, um, you know, whatever it's been. So our urgency of our preparation is kind of something we, we like to hang our hat on around here and, and making sure we understand that every moment matters. Uh, and, and I don't think that should change based upon the results of the previous week. It didn't change throughout those five games. And uh, you can have urgency and you can have a mindset uh, but I don't think our preparation needs to change very much from where we've been at. Kevin, you guys had one of the shocking games to stop with Cam Akers obviously a number of guys come in, middle of the season, you kind of had to see it. Yeah. What's the key to, I guess, getting those reps and a guy coming in middle of the year and just to have it hit on a guy in the first game? Yeah, I think it's a matter of, you know, quasing his staff, identifying the type of players that maybe have the potential to do that. And then, you know, the communication of us as coaches through the process of identifi identifying those guys to, to help with what maybe we see or where we would go from a path of getting that guy ready to play. And then I think the players, the individual players themselves deserve a ton of the credit. Um, you know, those guys' ability to come in and, uh, you know, some faster than others based upon necessity. Some other guys just um, eventually it just, you know, through in-season competition and the right uh, you know, the best players playing, whether that's in any position on our team, um, guys have earned those opportunities. And that's where they've also earned the respect and trust of their teammates and coaches that um, the decisions kind of tend to uh, work out that way. And then the players' pr production and performance on the field kind of ties into what we've seen most of the time in practice. Now with Josh, that was a unique circumstance where we hadn't really seen him practice at all. Um, outside of a couple scout team reps, and he goes out and earns it in real time, which is what made that so significant and special for not only him but our team. But each situation is its own, and, and uh, you know there's a lot of credit that goes around. Uh, but mostly, I, I, I'd, I'd think it should be with the player themselves for coming in and, and their teammates for the type of environment we have for them when they get here. Yep. Yeah, it's a good question. I think, you know, you, tie to try, you, you try to tie in the progressions and the timing of things with how your, uh, your footwork and your timing work out. Um, so, for instance, if a, a similar route concept has a two or three yard difference from depth, that might be the difference between a possible no hitch throw or maybe a, it's a decision for the quarterback at the top of his drop whether to take a hitch or not. Um, if, if it's been taught in a different way, another offenses that he's been in to take a hitch, he might be late in our system. Or uh, if we have a depth on an in cut at 12 to 15 on the near hash and he's thrown him 16 to 18, uh, he might be late on that or he might be early on another variation. So it's just finding kind of where, and, and sometimes you're finding out in real time on the fly. Uh, you're coaching that detail, you're making sure he's comfortable with it, but the muscle memory is what it is and the, and the rhythm and timing of a experienced player like that who had started a lot of, and played a lot this year, there's some plays that come up where uh, we're coaching on the fly, and that's going to happen when you've got a guy playing in real time. Uh, his playmaking ability, his ability to make throws that he has, uh, some really big ones, um, you know, that's a credit to him and, and, and kind of his ability to pick up and feel comfortable with, with whatever we're asking him to do. And it's on us as coaches to make sure we're constantly putting him in situations to feel comfortable, plays he feels good, good about, and then the things we need to correct uh, that's what we're doing throughout the week, throughout our preparation to make sure that we're, you know, continuously chasing improvement, the quarterback position, but really every position that every player we put out there on, on Monday night. Yeah, you know, the benefit of, of playing Monday nights definitely uh, helpful for, for us as coaches. It's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where the rhythm of the week never really changes. It's just how much time, how much, you know, maybe it's a Thursday game on a short week. Uh, maybe it's a bon you know, an extra day. Maybe we're coming off the bye and we've done some work, you know, throughout that off time. Uh, but as far as the rhythm of making sure that we're ready to present uh, the plan to our players, teach the plan, the techniques, the fundamentals, um, it's all kind of the same. And uh, the way it worked out this year, we get to 
you know, maybe install a little bit more today, have a little more classroom time, a little more walkthrough time, and then we'll come back and get some full speed work, you know, tomorrow in, in our version of our turkey bowl uh, tomorrow morning. And then uh, we'll make sure, I think it's very important uh, that guys get to spend tomorrow uh, at least a, a good chunk of the day with their families. We have a lot to be thankful for around here. Yeah, I think anytime you know any of our players you know turn the football over, we constantly look at each one as their own, especially with how much work and time we've put into the fundamentals. Um, you know, over uh, the course of the season as we've progressed and kind of had less you know footballs on the ground, it's come through a lot of hard work and and kind of different ways we prepare, how we have the scout team play, and how we you know do you know our different drill work throughout the week when we're in pads, even when we're in shells. Um, so we, you know, we're taking a look at all of those uh, in real time and, and then making sure not only are we identifying how something like that happens, um, if there's a, a fundamental flaw we can fix uh, that we didn't see before, uh, we've got to do that regardless of what the rep count uh, may look like. But it's, you know, it's very important that our guys understand how important it is to possess the football. Um, it's been a, you know, it's a winning and losing stat regardless of uh, you know, the team that I coach or any of the other 31 teams in this league. But for us, uh, when you just look at the numbers on when we can break even on the stat uh, since the start of last year, you know, I think those numbers are pretty strong. And then when we don't um, and we lose that, that turnover battle, you know, sometimes we've been able to overcome that. But just like the other night, your margin of error becomes so small, uh, field position becomes an issue, and ultimately given opportunities uh, for our opponent against our defense when – uh, you know, our defense is making it hard on people with how they're playing. So that's the complementary nature of, of football and, and, and how our team needs to play to win games. It's how we have won games. Uh, so we have to be critical uh, and make sure, you know, there's an accountability factor there. Yep. Yeah, I think, you know, that was, you know, selfishly for me, one of the big reasons why I was excited about bringing Flo in here, you know, from a, from a leadership standpoint, from a player development standpoint, uh, from his understanding of football, situational football, um, you know, having to, you know, work through a season with some injuries and roster construction and, and how you put together your game day roster. You know, he's, you know, him and I are constantly meeting and talking about that because I want him to feel like not only defensively, uh, he has all the pieces that he needs that we can provide with our roster. Uh, but then also, you know, getting his take on, you know, have you gone into a game with a low number at this position and um, how'd that work out? And, you know, could you have elevated? And, and just using the rules, he's, he's incredibly bright. You know, he's somebody I trust, you know, completely. And that does not surprise me that, you know, that was my expectation uh, when I brought him in here, uh, you know, that, that he would do what he's done with our defense, and, and he's surpassed even um, what I thought maybe what could be possible in year one. Um, and ultimately, that's not a surprise to me that the league's taken notice uh, with the quality of a coach and a man that he is. No, no, and they, you know, other than, you know, we, you know, we turn in a lot of plays each week just to get clarity on things we can coach better. Um, you know, things we can have an understanding of to help us call for me to call better plays, understand, you know, how things are going to be officiated. And, and in the end, I think it's, you know, I think it's one of those things that the league's going to handle that. Um, look, Kareem, I got a ton of respect for him as a player. He's always been somebody that, that, uh, you know, I've really admired the way he plays. He plays physical. He plays all out. Uh, he's, you know, a really, really quality. He's been a really good player in this league for a long time. So, um, the situation, the league, you know, the league decided to do what they did. Um, absolutely nothing against, you know, the player personally or anything like that. But, you know, we're moving forward, and, and uh, I'm sure he is too. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the the I've really enjoyed watching the way he's really brought out the best in some of our core players. I mean, getting to see guys like Daniel Hunter and DJ Wanham have the seasons they're having, Harrison Smith. And I think all Vikings fans were excited probably to see, 
you know, 22 down around the line of scrimmage, pressuring again, being a part of some of those things, um, as was I. And, uh, you know, then you look at, you know, some of the young players that have developed, like an IP at the linebacker position, um, you know, Makai and a Caleb. And, and then, so, you know, we're very deep at the safety spot. So let's, you know, the smart coach that he is, he's found a way to maximize Josh Metellus for the, the great player that he is while still allowing Cam Bynum and Harry uh, to, to really thrive in their roles, getting guys like Harrison Phillips and, and Jonathan Bullard and Tonga kind of, you know, maximizing their ability to impact the game as well. I, and, and it still all comes with an all 11 feel where it feels like they're all working together. The communication is, is clean. The operation is clean. Um, you know, total credit to Flo and his staff. And I think the way they've evolved throughout the season, um, I've really admired just, you know, taking something and making it better and not just relying on, you know, what maybe last Sunday looked like, but how can we make this morph and continue to grow and, and be the 2023 Vikings defense, regardless of Flo's past or, or Saravo or Durante or any of our other defensive coaches' pet. It's kind of a think tank world where, uh, you know, I, I told Flo the other day, you know, it kind of rivals what I've tried to do on offense with Wes and Ange and Coop and, and Key and, and, and Maude and all of our guys. And it's just that's what my goal was. You know, when you interview for jobs as a head coach, you, you have to have a plan for what your hope of the staff will be. And Flo has basically come in here and, and, and you know, done all that and then some. He's made me a better coach, you know, and, and he's certainly helped a lot of our players, which is the most important thing. Thanks, guys.